Hello, today we're going to demonstrate how to assemble the 9902202 -02 Better Homes and Garden Hutch. You'll find this unit in retailers in a box like this. It requires some basic household tools to complete the assembly. I have those here, a rubber mallet, a standard uh, claw hammer, a cross point Phillips screwdriver, a general plier, a box cutter, and at the end of the assembly we want to mount that to our desk and we'll require a drill and a 3 16 inch drill bit to uh, complete that task. Also, you may find useful a black uh, marker and I'll, I'll show you how to use that later. And uh, lastly, when we mount the unit to the desk, a couple pieces of scrap wood will come in handy and you'll see why. So our first step is we're going to open our box and uh, take a look at the contents. Okay, so now that we have the carton open, we're going to unpack our parts and uh, take note of the orientation of them just as we set them on the table. We have some packing material. find the instruction manual and you'll notice the red number on the instruction manual that's your date code you want to make note of that in case you have any issues and call our customer service line they'll be interested to know that date code your hardware pack your trim moldings and the hutch top and the back panel. So now that we have it unpacked, I'm going to put some of the packing material away and organize my parts. So now to get started on building our Better Homes and Garden hutch, we're going to reference our assembly manual that you found in the box. The assembly manual has a lot of great information in it. I'd like to go over the first couple pages for you. If you take a look at the very first page, or I guess it's actually page number two in the manual, you'll see the contact information for Amerwood. If you require any further assistance or have any trouble, there are people there to help you, so you can keep that information on hand. Page three gives you an outline of the actual parts in the unit. We've already taken a look and all of our parts are present here today. Page 4 is a very helpful page. Page 4 lists your hardware. The hardware for this unit comes in a prepackaged blister bag. The blister bag has individual cells keeping the hardware segregated to help ease in the assembly process. Another interesting feature of the assembly manual is the drawings of the hardware are all actual size. This gives you the ability to take a screw and actually lay it over the drawing to make sure that you have the correct screw for the purpose. We're going to get started. I'm going to use my uh, razor knife and I'm going to open the top of the cells for the hardware so I can leave my hardware segregated during my assembly. I've taken a look at my manual on page 5 and I see that I need two boards designated with the letter I, two boards designated with the letter G, and one board designated with the letter H. We're going to install some cam locks, which are the round metal cam lock, and some compression dowels in these parts. I'm going to go ahead and do the step. Taking our hammer, we have our two boards identified with the ink stamp on the end as letter G. I'm going to place two compression doll or a compression doll in each one. And then it'll 
require two cam locks, one for each one. Cam lock has an indexing indicator. It's a recessed line. We want to orientate that to the top of the part in alignment with the end drilling of the part. That will help us in further steps. So we've pre-built our two boards designated with the letter G. It's the same uh, process for our H. My compression bell, my can lock with the orientation toward the top of the part. Lastly, my two boards, letter I, simply require the cam locks, two per. Okay, that completes step one. So now we're going to start assembly step number two. You'll find that on page 6 of the assembly manual. The step requires your molding that's lettered double A and the fixed shelf which is letter, letter number M. We're going to be using some angle brackets. We'll find those in our blister pack and we'll require four of those. You'll notice that there's one side of the one leg of the angle bracket that has a pair of dimples. We'll be placing those up. When I build the unit, I like to attach those angle brackets to my shelf first. We'll be using our, our uh, black screws. It'll require eight for the step and our cross point screwdriver. So now that we have the four angle brackets attached to our fixed shelf, we're going to attach the molding. Again, we're going to use four of the small black screws that are contained in our hardware blister bag and our cross point uh, screwdriver. Now this molding is shorter in length than the shelf, so we want it, if it's properly mounted, the, the space will be equal on each side. Now when I'm putting these together, I like to leave them just a little bit loose so I can make my final adjustments when I'm finished with the part and then do my final tightening. I know it's tempting to want to break out the power driver right about now, but uh, you will get a much higher quality piece of furniture if you stick to hand tools. And the last one. I should also mention that building on a table is uh, much easier than trying to do this on the floor. If you uh, use your kitchen table, a tablecloth or a beach towel will protect your table and give you a nice working surface. So now that I have my molding mounted, I would like to hide this white edge or the light wood colored edge. And I'm going to do that by adjusting the molding slightly over to cover. This is when you want to give the fasteners a final tighten. Last step on this part is to put my four cam locks. And again, as you recall from the previous step, we want to look for that little orientation arrow on the cam 
and line that up to the outside edge of the part. We're simply pushing those in. And we've completed step number two. Okay, so now we're ready to start step number three in our assembly. And another tip for you, I find it very helpful to orientate the part on the table in a similar fashion to how it's shown on the drawing. This helps locate the correct holes for the correct fasteners and uh, just makes the assembly process go a lot smoother. For this step, we're going to be using for the first time our cam bolts. Our cam bolts uh, go in the hole specifically drilled for them. This step requires two. I'm going to install those now. Good idea to try to get them as straight as you can. We're also going to be utilizing two of our cam locks. We already know how those are installed, so I'll simply put them in. And we'll need three of our black angle brackets. Again, I'm going to orientate those with the leg with the dimples toward the top. fasten those on with that same black screw we used before and if you're not certain you have the correct one as I mentioned before you can simply lay it down on the manual and the manual has an actual size drawing so we can have some confidence that we're using the right hardware for the right application. And again, I'm going to leave these just a little bit uh, less than tight to ease my final orientation or adjustment of the part. Okay, so we're going to put our horizontal screws in, same as the previous board we built. And you'll notice in your manual that assembly step four is exactly the same for the other side. So now, after completing assembly steps three and four, you have your left and right hutch panels complete. This is how they should appear. Assembly step number five in building our better homes and garden hutch uh, involves utilizing the hutch top, which is designated with the letter L, and our crown molding designated with the letter U. This is one of the more tedious steps in our assembly because there's a large number of screws involved. We have our cam bolt that we uh, utilized before, 11 of them on this particular part. Easy to identify the holes that these cam bolts go in. Again, placing them in, in as straight as possible will provide a better result. We're also going to utilize five of our black angle brackets, again with the dimpled side pointing up, requires five of those and we've already seen how they are installed. So to complete this assembly, it's just a matter of repeating what we've previously learned. I want to show you what the completed top part looks like after the completion of step five. You'll see that we have all of our cam bolts properly installed and our molding is mounted with our black angle brackets. Now we're ready to begin assembling the top. This is outlined in step number six of our manual, and you'll be required to have the boards that you previously prepared. Our G board 
will simply go on, you line the cam lock up, you line the cam lock up with the cam bolt and our compression dowel in the adjoining hole. A little downward pressure and the compression dowel will slide right in. The H panel gets installed in the center position. And the second G board, lastly. Now that we have the boards in position, we need to tighten the cam locks. You'll need your cross point screwdriver, and you'll notice that in the cam lock, there's a recess. It's a little off center, and you'll simply turn this clockwise. You'll feel the two parts tighten up, and you'll want to repeat that step on the other two panels. Now we have the three boards installed. We want to put our two I boards on. The I boards get installed with the cam facing the rear of the unit. That would be the opposite side that has the molding. Simply drop that down and we'll tighten our cam locks the same as we did on the other panels by turning them clockwise. And it's the same easy process for the last board this assembly step. Proceeding to step 7 in our assembly manual, we'll have the boards that we pre-assembled designated with the E, the M, and the F. Now for the purpose of the demonstration, I've turned these parts facing the camera in the same orientation as shown in the manual. I'm simply going to attach the side panel to the fixed shelf and I'm going to turn my cam locks clockwise with my cross point screwdriver. And we'll turn the last cam lock clockwise to lock it in place. That completes our assembly step seven. We're on assembly step eight of building your better homes and garden hutch. What we have here is we have the assembly from step six and the assembly from step seven. With the assistance of another person, we're going to join the two parts. Now that you have the part properly positioned, we need to tighten the cam locks inside the unit with our cross point screwdriver. Okay, with all four of the cam locks tightened up, we have to uh, put some through screws in and attach our two moldings. So we spun the hutch unit around to the camera and we're going to put our black screws on the through holes across the fixed shelf. Now these line up with our partitions in the hutch, so you may have to adjust the position of the partition to hit the holes. There's a total of six of the through screws. Now that we have